Humans have always dreamed big, but thanks to technology, we're able to dream bigger. Technology is a powerful tool to overcome adversity and to realize our ambitions, whether it's a stunning feat of athleticism, the desire to preserve a culture, or the drive to break records. In this program, I meet five ambitious people hailing from South Africa, the United Kingdom, Peru, and Hong Kong, who are able to pursue their dreams thanks to technological innovation. In sport, Heritage and gaming will meet the inspiring people who are harnessing the power of tech for good. Being out in the water is very calming, it's very meditative, and I get to think a lot, but I really get to calm, calm my mind and, and, and just focus on being in the presence. Long Beach, a local surfing spot in Cape Town, South Africa. Despite the moody weather, 25-year-old Caleb Swanepoel is here today to face the waves. Could you share a little bit about how you became a professional surfer and for people who don't know what it means to be an adaptive surfer so an adaptive surfer um, or para surfer is anyone that surfs with a so-called disability a self-described outdoor enthusiast who is passionate about fitness Swanepoel competed twice in the world adaptive surfing championships representing south africa and medaled multiple times in national swimming tournaments <laughs> You've been able to achieve so much in the last five years, but we need to go back to 2015. What happened? So I was 20 years old and the day was perfect. My brothers and I were gonna go body surfing. On the wave I was about to catch or we were gonna catch together, I saw, I saw a great white. And um, I immediately turned towards my brothers and just shouted shark swim. And the next thing I knew, it just, something slammed into me, pulled me under the water, started shaking me around, um, and yeah, I, I didn't think I was gonna make it out of the water. The terrifying shark attack five years ago took Swanepoel's right leg from him, but it did not hamper the ambitions that he had for his life before the incident. Caleb, what I can't get over is three weeks after the shark attack, you were back in the water. How did you know, not just physically, but mentally, you were ready? Um, I don't think you ever know uh, if you're going to be ready or not. A lot of other shark attack survivors that we'd spoken to said getting back into the water helped them a lot. I always describe this experience as, as almost a rebirth. Swanepoel took another step toward recovery with his prosthetic, one that's computerized and, crucially, waterproof. He uses a state-of-the-art Genium X3 knee and a Triton heavy-duty foot, both designed by German company Autobach. The knee joint's very clever, so it uses gyroscopes and, and sensors to really mimic a very natural gait. So when I'm walking with long pants, it's very difficult to see that I have um, an amputation. And of course, you're wearing it right now. Could, could you point out and show me and describe some of its its functions? Yeah, I will. Um, so one of the things that amputees love, if they have enough space that with their leg, is a, is a rotation adapter. So it's a little unit that you click, which allows you to then um, rotate your leg. So my leg can rotate in a full. <laughs> um, it can rotate, you know, full 360, which 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 looks cool, but also allows me to do things like change really easily. At the gym, Swanepoel switches between various modes with a tap of a finger, which helps to expand his possibilities for movement. It's a bit like um, Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz when she taps her, her red heels together and she goes home. Um, it's a bit like that. I'm able to tap into certain modes, which allows me to really change um, how the knee works on the go. 
The great thing about this prosthetic is that it's really given me the best shot at getting back to what I really loved doing before I lost my leg. I really think that we need to normalize the way people view people with disabilities. It's really awesome when a kid comes up to me and points to his, his or her parents and says, oh, he's got a robot leg, you know, and that innocence and that, that's, it's beautiful. And I think that kind of connection is something that we can all learn from.